Good morning, everyone. This is equation of sigmoid. 1 upon 1 plus e to the power of minus z. This is differentiation equation that you have studied in class 10th. That is differentiation of functions fx gx equals to fx gx differentiation plus f, uh, differentiation into gx. And then this is probability equations that you have studied in class 10th. This is probability of A given B equals to probability of A and B upon probability of B. Do you guys remember it? No. <laughs> so last night I was studying uh, something about uh, World War II. I switched to YouTube. I opened uh, this uh, channel, World War II say oversimplified. Then I went to Netflix, watched this amazing documentary that was recommended to me by Netflix only, World War II in uh, Colors. Then I read this book, which was suggested to me by Amazon itself, that is Mein Kampf, uh, autobiography of Hitler by himself. Then I told Google to like wake me up, set an alarm for 7 a.m. tomorrow because I need to be here. Threw up a uh, location of uh, this college on Google Maps to be here. Then I need to ask, what's common behind that? Anybody? So it's AI, exactly. AI is running all of this. And the equations that you saw in the starting, that you have studied in 10th and 9th, your uh, primary classes, all of that is involved in uh, uh, creation of these esoteric algorithms, right? So my talk is on DNA. DNA, which is data and AI, shaping humans with AI, right? So we, we know there's a plethora of data available right now. A lot of data is available, right? And a lot of compute is available. So we are processing all of this data right now to get uh, amazing, amazing results. So ever since the inception of uh, universe, we, we know that there is a lot of infrared data that is available right now. So we created a, a universe map. We humans have only seen 0.000001% of uh, the universe, but we can create the map of universe with that data only. Right? YouTube. I, I'm sure everybody goes on YouTube. I go on YouTube every day, two hours a day, to uh, learn anything, anything that I want. Right? So YouTube has a data of like 24 TB data that is uploaded every day on YouTube. Right now, every day. So that is about 8.4 petabytes of data every month. Uh, so give you a, uh, like, to give you a perspective, if your laptop currently has one TB of data, to, so take 24 laptops right now and feed it inside a big uh, Almira. That is the data of YouTube that is generated in one day, right? So that is the amount of data that we are dealing with. So uh, with all these information, I like to ask the question, is AI the technology of tomorrow? No. The AI is happening right now. It is the technology of today. We... Uh, from all these algorithms, all these new esoteric uh, 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 logical uh, algorithms, we are uh, able to develop the technology of today. We are able to develop machines that can run, that can uh, go and find out, explore new things like human beings, right? So what is AI? The definition of AI is dynamic and problem independent. Like 50 years from now, uh, the definition of AI would be different than what it, it is today. 50 years before, it was like uh, coding a simple machine with a small uh, code that can uh, do anything that uh, we are uh, trying, which is very simple today, right? So something which is very different and which is always constant is goals of AI, right? Goals of AI is to uh, automate everything and anything that you can. But the other goal of AI is to look good like Arnold Schwarzenegger and take over the world, right? Like for the concerned people in the audience, that's not gonna happen. So goals of AI is basically to automate everything that you can so that humans, we can have more time, we can have more you know, uh, creative th thought process behind whatever we are uh, trying to do next, right? So we, uh, like let me give you an example of what is uh, what happened in industrial revolution? Industrial revolution happened. We got automation from the machines, like uh, we are having factory working machines right now, and that give 
human times to develop AI. Similarly, AI is trying to give time to develop new technologies, right? So where is AI now? That is the, uh, that is the most important question right now because what is AI is always developing, right? That, that is not constant. But where, where is AI now is the actual question that uh, makes you uh, interested in what is AI doing. So where is AI now? Machine learning. How many have you heard uh, machine learning? Machine learning is something which is closely related to AI. AI was for, uh, first driven with FL statement that was very, uh, very human in the sense. Machine learning tries to remove everything that is human in the technology part of it. So machine learning is trying to get where human learning is right now. So how do humans learn? So I, uh, I, uh, there's, there's a teacher who feeds in clean data with the assistance of the, uh, this data. Uh, you churn every information possible, and then you feed it to uh, students, right? That is how learning today work. That is how you have studied in school, to teachers, to textbooks, right? Now machine learning is trying to develop the same pipeline with the data that is available. So uh, uh, any engineer like me who feeds in clean data and take assistance from machine learning algorithms, the, that algorithm churns that data into something which is very, uh, useful, the uh, insights that you get from the uh, data, like uh, your Google Maps, your Google Translate, that uh, kind of data, and feed it to the consumers, right? So this is the pipeline that we are trying to develop with the machine learning side of algorithms. So learning human senses, one sense at a time. So we are trying to develop human being uh, artificially one sense at a time. So machines can see better than humans. Uh, this is this statement is very thought-provoking, right? So there's a challenge that goes every year uh, which tries to compare how machines can see today and how a good uh, human being can see it today. And uh, you would be surprised to know, last year, machines beat human beings on this task. So have you used Google Lens? So Google has an uh, application that develops that, uh, that it has developed with a lower amount of data. So you can point the ca camera on anything and it will tell you what that thing is. So another, uh, so this is the algorithm behind it. You take an image, you feed the image inside that algorithm, you uh, let it go and the uh, machine figure out itself like what the image is really about. So it could be a digit, it could be a simple image of cat and dog. So, like imagine, if, if this is one classification, if I can run this classification over the image and try to find out everything inside the image, you will get something like a traffic indicator, right? So I can take this algorithm, feed inside a car, and take another algorithm and can tell the car to drive itself. Self-driving cars, ring a bell. So that is what something that goes behind a self-driving car. Take that same algorithm, feed it the same image, and it can do this. Or I can show the same algorithm a movie, and I can uh, tell him to tell the algorithm to see what what is moving inside the, uh, what is moving inside that movie. So you can see that it is able to identify the moving parts of the clip. And if I want to censor anything, I can just tell it to censor that. So that is the amount of. Uh, a usefulness that I can derive out of a single algorithm. That is the same algorithm which is doing everything with a bit of tweaking. So now, boxes are boring, right? Boxes are very boring. So I can generate mask. What a mask? So in a box, if, we, if there's an object, just please mask it. So you tell the algorithm to mask what is inside the image pixel by pixel. So you'll say, what is the use of it, right? The use of it is in X-ray imaging. This is something which is very close to uh, human beings and medications, right? So you can right now uh, go to an AI doctor, you uh, give it uh, your scans, CT scans, and then you just tell it to segment the part which is affected. So right now, it is in, in, uh, in uh, US, they are using this algorithm to basically segment out the cancer generating uh, cells outside of an X-ray scans or CT scans, which is very useful. And what if I tell you that AI can draw? Uh, that's, that's very artistic, that is very human, uh, human in the sense that uh, people like to create new things, right? But 
Uh, what if I tell you AI can draw this college? So this is a photo of college that I took yesterday. And then I fed it into inside an algorithm and told it to paint in a different style. So th that image was generated. What if I tell you AI can imagine? Now, uh, I would like everyone to do a simple exercise. Close your eyes and imagine, uh, you, uh, imagine your mother smiling. You can imagine it, right? Now imagine uh, any famous personality smiling. You can do it, right? Similar thing, similar thing I can do with a algorithm, AI algorithm. I tell it to follow my instructions, right? So this is a algorithm which can imitate every actions out of a human face to another human face. This can map every actions from a face to another human face and this technology is very useful in the sense like I can make videos without even disturbing anyone. I can make TED talks without even calling the speakers, right? So this is a, another useful uh, application from that uh, algorithm. Like I can feed an algorithm an audio clip. And this algorithm would be able to generate the video of Obama speaking the news. So uh, this algorithm uh, was able to generate a five minute piece of news article from a, a normal audio sequence. That was pretty amazing. So what if I tell you AI can read and translate. Uh, this, is, so this is where AI is getting inside uh, the human perception, right? AI can read, AI can translate, AI can draw. Everything you can uh, imagine right now, AI is doing. So uh, I would like to share a story. I was in Poland. I was called to give a talk in Poland uh, on a similar basis. Then I was staying with a Polish guy. He didn't know how to read or uh, write in English. So I couldn't speak, I couldn't uh, communicate with him. So I really wanted to explore the place. I wanted to know where I can get a good food, a good diet. So I went to that guy with Google Translator in my pocket. I just took out the phone. I just tried, where, uh, where can I find a, near, uh, a nearby restaurant? I just uh, feed it inside the application, I run it. And Google was able to give the uh, translation and the audio clip of that. And I was able to communicate without even learning any new language. This is something that I have experienced. Uh, this is something that I have, uh, like I was amazed by the power of AI that I can communicate with anyone inside the world uh, without even learning a new language. So that language barrier, that the barriers that we have set in due to our learning can be broken by AI with uh, like a plethora of data right now. So this is an algorithm that maps every word that is inside the uh, human language to, uh, to, a, uh, to a n dimensional space. And in that space, you can see if the words are related to numbers, they come together, right? So what is the, this is something very technical, but how we can use it? We can use it inside your uh, text predictions, right? The uh, prediction that you deal every day. You, can, you go to your WhatsApp, you go to your text messaging, you go to your Gmail, you write something. You always will get these predict predictions. These are something that we are, uh, uh, we are getting out of the uh, algorithm. This is a long text. I will read only one line. What says my lord, the Duke of Virgin of Tyre? This is written by AI, not a human being. I fed, uh, I fed a part of Shakespeare uh, play inside an algorithm and told it to generate a new chapter and it generated this. So you can read it, what shall buy these things for a secret fool. So it is trying to copy the style of Shakespeare, right? So this is another algorithm in which you can feed images and you can ask what is inside the image. So you can see there are two horses in the image and I ask the uh, algorithm how many horses are in this image and it generates two. So the, this is the sim similar algorithm working behind that was behind the uh, traffic signal uh, ap application that was behind that translate application and this application. So everything is run by a simple algorithm that, uh, that can do all of these, right? It is very similar to humor learning. 
How many of you have seen this Google Duplex? Google Duplex is another algorithm that was developed by Google, and it tries uh, to order, it tries to book an appointment in your voice. So you don't have to pick up your phone if you just book an appointment on the calendar, on the Google calendar, that you want to go for a haircut, the Google, will make, uh, the Google Duplex will make a call itself to the uh, b uh, barber shop and it will book an appointment without you even touching the phone. That is something we are moving towards. AI can beat and move like human beings, right? So there's this sport called parkour where everybody jumps over the obstacles, right? AI is currently doing it better than this guy, I guess, yes. So he's falling and breaking things apart, but AI can do. But I want to stress on the part that how difficult it is for a uh, machine to jump. It has to calculate what distance and what power with it should jump, what degrees it should rotate in the, in the air to land on its feet. These are the things that we don't even care about, right? We don't even think about. If we want to jump, we just jump. But for a, for a, a machine to calculate, calibrate everything, we have to do, develop an algorithm. And this machine can run anywhere, can go, walk, and do anything that human physically can, right? Similar, similar algorithm we can design to play games. Uh, games which, uh, with better accuracy than human beings. It's the same algorithm running behind every application that I'm showing you right now. But how are these affecting you? Every day, you go on internet. Every day, you go on Google, you search something. Every day, you take out your phone. Every day, you try, just interact with internet any, any which way possible. You are dealing with AI. You don't even know it. It's inside your system right now. It has penetrated deep within you. You, you cannot live without a tech, few of technologies that I've mentioned today, and you don't even know that AI is behind that. So isn't it cool? Isn't it uh, like thought-provoking? Like uh, AI has penetrated so deep inside you, AI is becoming you, and you don't even know about it. So what if I tell you all these I've learned in two years? Every application that I've developed, everything that I know about AI, I've learned in two years. Because we are already taught that. We have already deal with that. We have deal with the machine, uh, machine learning algorithm in the form of mathematical equations. So any, anybody who wants to go and learn about machine learning, I, I, I say it is a time right now, go and learn about it. Because you are already there. You know how it works. You just need to know how you can learn about it, right? So lastly, I, I got uh, this guy. This is Alan Turing. Uh, he just cut short the uh, World War II by 18 years just by developing one single algorithm that was the first algorithm of artificial intelligence. He, he proposed a question, can machines really think? In his first paper, that was first ever paper written in AI, and I leave you, leave you with that question. Can machine think and act like humans? And last of all, I got this recommendation on my Netflix. This is the imitation game. What this movie has common uh, with everything is this, this was based on World War II. This has Alan Turing, and it deals with artificial intelligence. And the funny part is this was recommended with an artificial algorithm. So thank you.